Hey folks, you're OSMVDXers.com. You're watching our video review of the Huawei T-Mobile Tap. This is a mid-range based multimedia touchscreen device you can find on T-Mobile's network here in the United States for around $80 with a two-year service agreement or about $120 unlocked without an agreement. And the device offers pretty good performance for the money with solid uh, call quality and also performance in terms of battery life and basic game functionality, but don't expect all the bells and whistles you would typically find from an Android-based handset. As far as the aesthetic design standpoint is considered, the phone really resembles the HTC Touch in many different ways, starting with the 2.8 inch resistive touchscreen employed on the front of the unit, which makes the device pretty small to hold in hand. However, a quality sense can also be detected due to the usage of soft touch materials embodying most of the body, which gives it a pretty good uh, weighty feel and also a non-slick design in the hand, uh, which belies its pretty inexpensive price tag. Taking a look at the closer, uh, closer at the front of the device, you have access to a proximity sensor and earpiece at the front of the device. And below the actual touchscreen display, we have access to a five-way navigation D-pad and talk and end keys. These buttons are all, also backlit, so in darker environments, um, especially when the proximity sensor will allow that to happen, you can see that they have a blue backlight, which is actually pretty cool. The five-way navigation toggle, however, is a slightly, slightly cramped design. So if you have larger fingers and hands, it might be a little bit more difficult to use. The right-hand side of the device features a dedicated camera shutter key for taking images with the 3 megapixel autofocus camera, and also you have the ability to use this as a lock slash unlock key for the touchscreen, which is a pretty nice feature to have. The top also features a dedicated volume rocker switch, which is risen above the surface and easy to press. The top of the unit also houses a mini USB port for charging, syncing, and also for the headphones, because unfortunately the T-Mobile Tap does not have a standard 3.5mm headset jack. However, it does have stereo Bluetooth if you want to use wireless options. It also includes a power on and off switch that's slightly small and hard to press. The back of the device features a loudspeaker as well as the aforementioned 3.0 megapixel camera and also the camcorder. And behind the back cover, you will find access to the SIM card and also the micro SD card, which can be hot swapped without removing the back battery, which is actually pretty nice. This is also a MyFaith's phone on contract, so you can get it with unlimited talking with five of your friends if you decide to go with the contract route instead of the unlocked no contract method. So turning the device on, you can see it runs on a proprietary Java-like operating system, which has been designed by Huawei. And the main screen here is very similar to the Samsung TouchWiz user interface with a left-hand drawer that's filled with widgets and applications that you can populate your home screen with. Granted, this UI only offers one home screen, so you can't actually add more pages if you have more applications, um, which is actually not that big of a deal because um, you can't actually add more widgets if, you know, through an app store or anything like that. So you're basically locked down to the number that you're provided with upon your first boot of your device, which is unfortunate. And also some of these widgets aren't again true widgets like the clock here. Some of them are just basic um, shortcuts to different functions. For example, if we take out the game functionality here, we can actually drag that out. You can see it's just a shortcut to games instead of being an actual live widget. Still, it's a pretty nice feature to have and overall pretty easy to use. The resistive touchscreen employed by Huawei is slightly not as responsive as we would like it to be. It requires kind of a firm press before functions will actually register, which is on the unfortunate side of things. But if you tap on it, there is a haptic feedback vibration, so it definitely resembles an actual button being pressed, which is on the plus side of things. Taking a closer look behind, um, on the top of the device, we have access to a, the battery indication. Speaking of, the battery life is actually pretty decent. It lasted us around three days before we had to recharge it with moderate usage, which is pretty good in today's smartphone standards. And also we have a also a sound profiler, which you can tap on for a shortcut. And that's gonna take you into um, your access for vibration, flight or car modes, um, allow you, allowing you to adjust your ringtones on the go. On the left-hand side, you have access to the bar reception for the phone. Speaking of, reception is only moderate. We received about two bars constantly here in the Seattle area where T-Mobile networks are actually pretty strong. So um, as far as the reception goes, it's only about average, but call quality was decent. Um, our testers noted a slight hiss on the other side of the phone, but for the most part, um, they said that the call quality was excellent and the audio quality is good as well, along with the speaker, which is very loud. So it's great for playing back music and also using the speakerphone mode when calling people. As far as the dialer pad is concerned, the buttons again are a little bit small. Again, you will notice slight amounts of lag when using the phone due to the sluggish processor employed here. But as long as you're not playing too much uh, web browsing you know, or too many uh, extensive flash-enabled games, you should be fine for the most part. 
There's also a contacts list um, as far as the shortcut icon on the, on the bottom device is considered. Also, you have a shortcut for the web browser and also the main menu. Speaking of, the menu is in its uh, standard 4x3 uh, you know, tile navigational system, which you can use either a D-pad or the actual touchscreen to navigate around. And functions on the device include the aforementioned uh, stereo Bluetooth for you to listen to music on the go, especially with the uh, included 2GB card for the micro SD. Or you can also um, use the camera and camcorder to record um, both video and take, take images. And of course, you can also record voice memos. Here you can see you also have an email client and it supports most clients like Gmail and Yahoo Mail for some examples. The web browser is good. It's an HTML based uh, web browser, but it doesn't support the full flash based versions of um, pro professional full, full sites. And also as a 3D, 3G enabled handset, um, call quality is on the more sluggish, um, browsing the web is on the more sluggish side of things, especially since the, this device doesn't offer pinch to zoom support either. As far as music, again, you have some track support and some cover out support and also offers kinetic scrolling so you can go up and down um, to scroll through your list of music, which actually works pretty decently. Taking a look at some other features, including Telenav for GPS turn-by-turn -turn navigation, it works well, except that the actual screen is slightly cramped and restrictive because it only has 2.8 inches diagonally instead of something like 3 inches and above. Um, otherwise, the phone also offers an accelerometer, so when you rotate the screen for um, for example, comp composing text messages, you do have the ability to actually um, you know, use the full QWERTY keyboard instead of the T9 style predictive keyboard. And again, if I rotate the device, you can see it here. Again, even in the horizontal view, the keyboard is still slightly cramped due to the usage of a smaller screen size and a resistive touchscreen. But for the most part, it definitely works and it's better than nothing at all. And um, the addition of an accelerometer means that you can play some games such as racing with the actual motion detector pre-installed. There's also um, other device, other applications on here, inclusive of some entertainment, um, some options such as games are built into this device, also Google Maps for um, some more detailed map information. Clicking on the Java will take you into the Java games that are pre-included. It includes quite a few extras and also some demos on here, and they are inclusive of the Brain Challenge uh, game. There's a Platinum Solitaire. There's also a Bubble Bash 2, which is found on most, uh, most T-Mobile devices, even on their Android counterparts, in a uh, Uno game as well. So if we take a look at the demo version of Brain Challenge, you can see that it actually plays pretty well. And even though it's only a demo, it works, and it's a great time waster, especially if you're on the go um, and you don't have time to purchase more games from the T-Mobile store, which you can do, but you have to use 3G again. Um, and game again, game support is pretty decent, um, not that bad at all. And there is sound that you can play back with your games. Um, again, you do have an accelerometer if some of those games will require that. Let's put no sound for now. And again, it's going to take you through the basic interface. You can see that loading games is actually pretty easy to use. The actual interface for the games are well designed, so it's not like because this phone isn't an Android phone, you don't have any games um, and, and some basic apps installed. You do have the option. It's just, again, not as immersive as the actual um, design of an Android device, but it is here and it definitely works pretty well. Um, take uh, plus or minus, and uh, if you are looking for some extra games, they are included on this particular phone. Some other applications include a file manager for taking a look at your images and your photos. There are some basic organizer functions like a calculator, converter, a world time, uh, very basic applications, however. Um, but the interface overall is pretty easy to understand and everything can be interpreted very nicely. They're all icon based. Um, so for the most part, we were pretty impressed with the actual performance of the device. Uh, for a basic feature phone, we thought that you know performance was pretty decent. And if we take a look at our camera album as well, you can see that the picture quality of the actual 3 megapixel camera is not bad at all, even in low light situations. Of course, it's not going to be as good as some camera phones out there, but uh, if you are looking for something decent or you know something that to start off with, it's better than nothing, and it can replace your digital camera if you're out on a go um, and you just have to grab something with you. It's a great way to just take something and be on the go. So the camera is actually better than expected for the most part. So overall, if you are looking for a handset that is easy to use, perhaps your first touchscreen device, perhaps for kids, with very good sound quality um, and pretty good battery life in a compact design that offers some extras such as games and serial Bluetooth, but you don't want a fully uh, fledged smartphone and also the price that comes attributed to one, then I think that the T-Mobile Huawei Tap is a good option for you. Thanks for watching this video review here at osmvtxreads.com and also our brother site at OS Tech News. This has been the Huawei T-Mobile Tap.